Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, we'll be doing the full review for the Samsung Galaxy J7 uh, Pro. And this is sort of a upper uh, mid-range uh, smartphone from Samsung and it cost around 20,500. But uh, is it worth it for that price? I've been testing this smartphone for the last 10 days. So I'll be dividing this review between the pros and cons so that you can decide if this smartphone is right for you or not. But before that, here are the specs for the Samsung Galaxy J7 Pro. As you can see, it's powered by the Exynos 7870 uh, processor, which is actually not a very new processor, but uh, this one has three gigabytes of RAM and 64 GB of internal storage. And I like the fact that it is a proper dual SIM device. It also has a fingerprint scanner, a 5.5 inch Super AMOLED screen, and other specs are on the screen. So let's divide this uh, review between the pros and cons. First, I'll go over the pros. What are the things I liked about this device? And later on, we'll move to the cons. What are the things that I did not like about this device? So let's start with the pros. And the first thing that I really liked about this device was the build quality. The build quality is uh, one of the best in this price segment. Uh, it feels like a premium handset when you hold it. So no compromises in the uh, build quality. Only nitpicking if I have to do is that everything is fine. The volume, uh, uh, the uh, power on a button, everything is fine. Fingerprint scanner, everything. But I noticed slight flex in the volume uh, rockers. Apart from that, excellent uh, build quality. And also it looks um, much more premium. For example, uh, yes, it is having a bigger screen, but it looks very similar to the Galaxy S6. And it also has this ambient uh, display. So uh, regarding build quality, uh, very good build quality. Now moving to another thing is that um, fortunately this device does not skimp on a lot of sensors and it also has the auto brightness sensor. And I'm happy to say that the auto brightness sensor uh, works fine in most conditions you don't have to always fiddle with the same uh, next thing is that again regarding the sensors um, uh, many of the Samsung phones especially in the mid-range Samsung has a habit of omitting most of the sensors but I'm glad to say that they didn't do that with this one it has all the important sensors and even gyroscope compass uh, those sensors are present I tried uh, YouTube 360 degrees videos with this one and it worked fine let me just mute this one and uh, I also tested a GPS functionality with Google Maps. I was just going somewhere and it worked fine with this device. Moving to the speaker, it has just a single speaker here. It's in a very odd position, uh, but it is adequately uh, allowed. It's not a stereo speaker though. Uh, now moving to uh, another thing that I liked with this device is that in fact I did uh, a gaming also with this device I've already posted it's a gaming review I played uh, quite a few games and it ran many of the games fine without any issues but if you try to play uh, some of the heavy games at very high settings yes then you might notice some lag uh, so that is one thing I noticed but the good thing was that even after extended gaming and I was using this handset as my primary handset for almost a week uh, even with heavy multitasking and stuff this handset does not get uh, warm uh, so that is it's slightly get warm but never hot the maximum even when i do i did gaming was just 38 degrees centigrade so in terms of heat dissipations samsung has done a good job um, now moving to the battery uh, again here uh, i got good results it has a big battery it's a 3600 milliamp hour uh, battery and i was easily getting about one and a half days of usage with this uh, device even with dual sim i was using it with airtel and uh, geo and yes obviously uh, reliance uh, what do you say geo uh, 4g voltage works on this device so even with dual sim i was averaging about at least one and a half days of usage as you can see from the uh, charts even the screen on time was actually very good with this device so in terms of battery life i was satisfied and it will easily last even if you're sort of a very heavy user for a full uh, working day without any issues and for the most uh, users uh, i would say it'll easily last for about one and a half days and if you're sort of a casual user it will uh, give you almost two days of battery life so in terms of battery life i am uh, i'm pretty happy again uh, this is surprising because many of the samsung smartphones don't get that great battery life now moving to uh, the screen again it has a super AMOLED uh, screen it's a 5.5 inch 1080p screen and again Samsung has used a good quality screen on this and I also like the fact that we have this ambient uh, display so the time is always shown you can disable it if you want but uh, I did my battery testing with always this uh, uh, what do you say ambient display on and with that also I was getting about one and a half days of battery left so you have this but one call is that uh, uh, it does not have a physical LED notification light so if you are looking for that that 
is not present on this uh, device uh, now moving to camera uh, the rear facing camera is actually good it has a f 1.7 lens and i was surprised that even in outdoor conditions as that is at evening and night some of the snaps that i took came out good but again as this device does not have any optical image stabilization you have to be careful when taking shots especially at night because uh, you, you can get blurry shots because it does not have os but overall i would say the camera performance was actually surprising the camera shots came out to be actually good with this uh, device but again don't expected to compete with higher end Samsung phones those have optical image stabilization this does not have optical image stabilization so especially if you're taking shots in the evening you have to be perfectly uh, still to take the shots this is a quick sample that I shot with the rear facing camera and as you can see this is in night conditions the lighting was not that good uh, but uh, the video came out to be okay yes the focus was jumping a little bit due to a pretty low light uh, but again it can record decent video I'm recording this uh, sample with the front facing camera of the Galaxy J7 Pro and as you can see I am in my office and this is an artificial lighting condition. So this uh, should give you an idea regarding the video and the audio quality of the Galaxy J7 Pro. Now moving to another uh, thing that this device has is that it has full integration for Samsung Pay. So if you add your credit cards and stuff, you can just go to a what is a credit card machine and just tap it and pay. So that functionality is there on this uh, device. And also moving to the fingerprint scanner. The fingerprint scanner actually is pretty good on this one. Let me show you. As you can see, you just tap in and it works. And uh, it is very responsive. I would say it works most of the time. Uh, so the fingerprint scanner that is provided is also very good. But again, one um, minor con that I notice is that uh, if there is a little bit of moisture of your hands are wet, then it will not work. But apart from that, as you can see, the fingerprint scanner also works. Now, these were the good things about this device. Now, let's move to the things that I did not like with this device. And uh, again, as I've already mentioned, it does not have that physical LED notification light. So you have to be aware of that. Also, again, as it's a uh, Samsung device and it's sort of a mid-range device, I think so Samsung intentionally did the stupid things to cripple this device. For example, they removed haptic feedback uh, on these, uh, what do you say, multitasking and the back buttons. And if you notice it, uh, it also does not have any backlighting. So I think so uh, Samsung just to differentiate their product from their premium lineup to the mid-range, intentionally disabled uh, those backlighting and the haptic feedback. Even I, I found this really silly that the default keyboard that comes with this device, uh, when you type, it does not have any haptic feedback. But I installed Google keyboard, that is a Gboard, and using that I could get, uh, what do you say, haptic feedback. So the vibration motor, everything is there. Just to differentiate the product, they are just disabling those features. So I find it silly. Uh, that is uh, one thing I noticed. Now moving to RAM management. Here I was sort of disappointed with this device. Uh, it has three gigabytes of RAM, and I would say, uh, the RAM management is not done well with this device. It frequently tries to uh, load the apps. If you're sort of a moderate to heavy user, if you're a very casual user, you won't notice it because it holds approximately about between three to four apps in the memory. But apart from that, for example, if you're a sort of heavy user, you'll be moving from one app to the other app, then you might notice uh, app reloading. So the RAM management definitely is not that great on this device. Also, uh, you might notice some minor UI lag at times. It's not always that I notice the UI lag, but sometimes when I was doing heavy multitasking, moving between here and there, I noticed some minor UI lag. Uh, so again, that is also something you have to uh, note. But again, uh, to be fair, it was not always, only sometimes I noticed that. Also, I did not like the fact that as this uh, device is almost around 20,000 price point, Samsung should have given fast charging, but we don't have any fast charging on this device. And this device is having that uh, huge battery, 3,600 milliamp hour battery. So it takes slightly over two hours for this one to charge. So that is again, one more thing you have to note. Also, I simply, this is the biggest con I have with this uh, device. And that is regarding the processor that Samsung has used on this one. They're using the old Exynos 7870 processor on this device, which is actually more than one year old processor. This was used in some of the Galaxy J7s that were launched last year. And they are using the same one on this one. And that is a decent processor for a 720p screen, but this is having a 1080p screen. Uh, and the GPU that is used on this is not that powerful. And I feel that minor lag that I was mentioning sometimes that you notice, 
is because of that GPU. So I feel for this price point, Samsung should have used a processor like the Snapdragon 625 or a more powerful Exynos processor. If they would have done that, this would have been one of the best mid-range overall smartphone. But definitely uh, this processor that they have used was a wrong choice in my frank opinion. Yes, if you are sort of a casual user, you won't notice. But if you are a sort of a, a heavy or a power user, then you will definitely notice that lagginess that is due to the processor. And now to sum it up, I would say moving to the price also, definitely you are paying that Samsung tax for this device because if you take into account the price to performance ratio, then there are a lot of other devices that do better than this at this price point. But again, I know many people want a specific Samsung smartphone. But And if you're sort of a that person and you're okay with this, uh, Samsung tax, I say, uh, then you can go with this. To sum it up, I would say what I liked about this device is the build quality, the super AMOLED screen that you get with the always on display, the looks again, it looks and feels actually very premium. And uh, also you have that Samsung pay functionality if you use. And uh, I also like the fact that uh, this device is a proper dual uh, SIM device. So you can actually add two SIM cards to this and also a micro SD card. There is a need these days uh, for that if you require a lot of storage. So uh, it's nice to see that um, Samsung has provided proper dual SIM support. Now for cons is that again, as I've mentioned, it has that outdated the processor and also the RAM management is not done very well. And obviously, you are paying that Samsung tax. So if you are okay paying that extra price to Samsung for a Samsung device, you can go with this device. Again, be, uh, again decide based on the pros and cons that I have mentioned. Again, I've also posted the gaming review for uh, this device and also its unboxing uh, video earlier. So links for those videos will be there in the, uh, what do you say, uh, YouTube description uh, below. So again, check that out for more info. And if you're still not subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. This is Ranjit and I hope to see See you in my next video.